Hi students, welcome to Bosco Campus Vision. In today's session, let me talk about pitch and intonation. Just as in music, our voice too modulates while in a connected speech. The variation in modulation depends upon how our vocal cord vibrates. The rate at which the vocal cords vibrate when we speak or sing is called the frequency of vibration of the vocal cords. This frequency of vibration of vocal cords determines the pitch of the voice. The more rapidly the vocal cords vibrate, the higher will be the pitch. When we hear someone speak, we realize that they don't always speak on the same pitch. We hear constant variations in the levels at which the speaker's voice is pitched. Sometimes the pitch rises, sometimes it falls and there are times at which the pitch remains level. The pattern of changes in the pitch of the voice when we speak or sing constitute the intonation of a language. In other words, we can say that utterance bound pitch is intonation. Falling and rising are the two major intonation types. Rising intonation A pitch movement from a low to a high pitch taking place within a single syllable is called rising intonation. Falling intonation A pitch movement from a high to a low pitch is referred to as a falling intonation. If the pitch falls from about mid to low and then rises again to mid is called a fall rise intonation. The term tonic or tone may be used to refer to fall rise or fall rise that is the type of pitch movement within a single syllable. Now let's take a look at what a tone group boundary is. When we speak we make pauses at certain points. For example, consider the sentence. The secretary said, let me thank all of you. When we pronounce this sentence, we pause after said. Such a pause may be called a tone group boundary. The tone group boundary is indicated with a double bar. Tone group boundaries divide an utterance into tone groups. Each tone group is a stretch of utterance between two pauses, that is, two tone group boundaries. For example, consider the sentence, if you study well, you will pass. So, in this sentence, there are two tone groups, if you study well and you will pass. So, that's about tone group boundary. Before one can go any further into the study of intonation, one has to decide three things about an utterance. First of all, how many tone groups can it be divided into? That is, the choice of tonality. Then, where shall the tonic be? That is, the choice of tonicity. And then, what kind of tonic is to be used? That is, the choice of tonic or tone. Now, let's analyze these three things one by one. Tonality. Normally, tone groups are indicated by pauses. In written English, pauses are indicated by commas, semicolons and full stops. Therefore, generally, a tone group boundary coincides with one of these punctuation marks. For example, consider the sentence. If I have studied carefully, I would not have failed. In this sentence, there are two tone groups. If I have studied carefully and I would not have failed. Here, the two tone group boundaries coincide with one comma and full stop. Though this is generally so, there are exceptions. If the speaker wants to highlight a particular point in an utterance, he or she can give it the status of a tone group. For example, consider the sentence. Mohan's sister is teaching English. Normally, 
we utter the sentence as a single tone group. But if we want to highlight the fact that Mohan's sister is teaching English and not any other subjects, we would utter it as two tone groups. Now let's consider tonicity. After dividing a long utterance into smaller tone groups, a speaker has to decide which syllable is to carry the tonic or tone. The syllable carrying the tonic is called the nucleus or the tonic syllable. In normal speech, that is, if the speaker does not consider any of the words in the utterance as particularly important, then the tonic falls on the last stressed syllable. Thus, in the sentence, I am going to buy a bike, the last stressed syllable is bike and this syllable carries the tonic. However, if the speaker wants to give importance to a particular word, then the tonic falls on the stressed syllable of that word. Thus, in the sentence, I am going to buy a bike, if the meaning is, I am going to buy a bike and not anything else with emphasis on bike, the tonic would be on the stressed syllable of that word. Again, if the meaning is, I am going to buy a bike with emphasis on buy, the tonic would be on that word. Then, tonic. After dividing an utterance into tone groups and deciding which syllable carries the tone or tonic, then the next step is to decide which tonic to use, that is fall or rise or fall rise. Tonics are marked with short strokes slanting upwards left for fall and right for rise. The choice of a tone will depend upon what the speaker wants to convey, what emotional attitude has to be conveyed to the listener. It also depends upon whether the speaker wants the listener to interpret a group of words as a statement or a question, a command or a request. So, we can say that intonation has a grammatical function to play. That is, with the help of intonation, the hearer can make out whether a certain utterance is a statement, a question, a command or a request. There are no hard and fast rules regarding the choice of a particular tone for a particular type of utterance. Now, let's take a look at the intonation patterns of different types of sentences. As I have already said, there are no hard and fast rules regarding the choice of a particular tone for a particular type of utterance. These are some general guidelines. Falling tone. The falling tone may be used in ordinary statements made with no implications, in WH questions asked neutrally, then in commands, in exclamations and in tag questions which imply that the speaker is certain about what is said and he just expects the listener to confirm his statement. The rising tone may be used in incomplete utterances, often the first of the two clauses in a complex sentence. Then. In listing items, we use a rise for each except the last one. Then, in declarative sentences used as questions, in yes or no questions and in WH questions asked in a warm, friendly way indicating extra politeness and interest. Then, in polite request and in tag questions where the speaker wants the listener to answer his question and give information. The fall rise tone. The use of a fall rise tone indicates that the speaker implies things which are not explicitly expressed. The listener should understand more than a literal interpretation of the words. So that's about pitch and intonation. Here is the question for you. Please do answer the question. Thank you so much for paying attention.